Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this full CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about layer 3 ether channels. In the earlier lectures in this section, you saw how to configure layer 2 ether channels. We can configure layer 3 ether channels as well. And you can see that with the configuration example here. And the configuration is actually exactly the same. The only difference is that we make the ports a layer 3 port with the no switch port command. So that's a standard command you can use on a layer 3 switch, whether you're using ether channel or not, to say that the port is a layer 3 port so that you can put an IP address on there. So let's look at the configuration. So at global config, I've said interface range, gigabit ethernet 101 to 2, and then I say no switch port to make those layer 3 ports, and then I'm going to configure them as a port channel. So I say channel group 1 mode, and then the same options as we had for layer two, it can be active, auto, desirable, on, or passive, depending on whether you want to make it a static ether channel with on, or we can use active or passive for LACP, or we can use auto or desirable for PAGP. So that will group the ports together into an ether channel. We can then put our other configuration on that ether channel that's where we're going to put our IP address. So we say interface port channel one, the one ties up with a channel group number. And then in this example, we've said IP address 192.168.0.1, and remember to do a no shutdown on the interface. Okay, so that is a layer three ether channel. That's the complete config. So this could have been a really short lecture, but there's another implication of this, something else I want to talk to you about here, and that is the network design. So looking at our traditional campus design with the core distribution and access layer, and the way that this would be done originally would be there would be layer two links between the access layer switches and the distribution layer switches. And the default gateway for the end hosts would be on the distribution layer switches. And we would have spanning tree running between the axis and the distribution layer because they, they're layer two links. Well, a trend that you can see increasingly now is actually putting layer three links in everywhere. And the benefit you get from doing that is it means that you're not using spanning tree anymore. Spanning tree is a necessary evil. The bad side of spanning tree is that it tends to shut down half of your links and it's also very slow to recover from failure as well. So it's bad, but it still does good things. You still need it because it would be way worse if you had a layer two loop in your network because that would just basically bring your network down. So we make sure that we don't have layer two loops by having spanning tree enabled, but the bad side is that it, it's slow to recover from failures and it does shut down half our links. So it would be better if we could have layer three links everywhere and not use spanning tree anymore, right? Now you're maybe wondering, well, okay, well, why didn't we always do that? Why did we used to have layer two links between the access layer and the distribution layer? Now, in a lot of modern networks, we still do have layer two links from the access to the distribution layer, but an increasing trend that you'll see now is that layer three everywhere. And the reason it's possible is that layer three switches have come down in price a lot. Back in the day, layer three switches were a lot more expensive than layer two switches. And your access layer switches were where you had the high port count, where you had all of your hosts plugged in. So you had a lot of access layer switches and it just wasn't possible from a cost point of view to put layer three switches in on all your access layer switches. But because time has moved on now, and the prices have gone down for layer three switches, it is more feasible to do that now. So if you do put in layer three switches everywhere, including in the access layer, now you actually have the layer three links 
from the access layer to the distribution layer, meaning you've got an IP address on this port here and an IP address on this port here. So because everything is layer three, you don't have spanning tree running anymore. Spanning tree only works on layer two links. So the way that you do have the paths being determined between your switches, it's not being determined by spanning tree anymore, it's being determined by your routing protocol. So when you're using layer three links everywhere, you will configure a routing protocol on here as well. And it's up to the routing protocol to handle the path determination. With your routing protocols, they support equal cost load balancing. So you're not gonna have links being shut down. All your links will still be available and traffic will be load balanced across all of them. Also, your routing protocols recover from failures. They converge a lot faster than spanning tree does. So that's a benefit you get there. Now, when you do this, last thing to tell you about it is that the default gateway is not going to be on the distribution layer switches now as it would be with layer two on the access layer. The default gateway for your end host is going to be on the access layer switches. And if you think about it, it has to be because we're going to have an IP subnet down here and we're going to have a different IP subnet here. And the default gateway for your hosts has to be in the same IP subnet. So your default gateway is now going to be configured on your access layer switches, and you're going to have routing everywhere, layer three links everywhere above that. Okay. Oh, and I've put this in the Ether channel lecture because very often when you're doing that, you are going to have Ether channels going up between your switches. And when you've got layer three everywhere, of course, there are going to be layer three ether channels. Okay, that's everything I needed to tell you here. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can click on the link above my head or in the description to enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.